Hey, what's going on, everybody? Jamie McDonald and Mike Baining here again for episode number 34 of Mirrorless Minutes. And I am really, really hoping that this is going out live. <laughs> it seems <laughs> like we're like hit or miss. We're like, what, you know, yeah. 2 and 0 maybe on the live hangouts. I'm not sure where we're at. Or yeah, I know. Or, but uh, well, I, just got a, I just got a thing. It says live streaming from YouTube, Mirrorless Minutes right now. That's awesome. I so, I don't know if it said that last time too, but uh, <laughs> I don't know if I've ever even got one of those. So that probably means we're not. Oh no! <laughs> Actually, here I just opened it up on my iPhone and I'm I'm watching yeah. you talk. <laughs> hey, so we're live. <laughs> yes. Ah, we All did right. it. The Google gods have smiled upon us. <laughs> finally, finally. So uh, the title, you know, the little blurb that I put out there for uh, each episode, alludes to the fact that. 2016, I think you and I are going to be a little busy. <laughs> yeah, I think we've, uh, you know, we kept putting out that whether it was uh, uh, weather, sickness, family issues, it seemed like we had to postpone three or four times, but we finally got together and holy yep. cow, um, <laughs> I went back and my head was spinning all the way back. And then I started putting it all the, down when I got back home on the calendar. I go, oh my gosh. We are busy. <laughs> yeah, you know, and it's funny because I'm looking at the schedule and we, for the most part, have like uh, almost, well, March. Mm -hmm. I don't have anything in April set up yet, yet being the keyword. Right. So starting in like March all the way through into like September, right. there are things going on every single month. Uh, so I'll tell you what, Mike, let's, can I start off and I'll start off with the March meetup? Yeah, let's do what, and do you want to just talk alternate. about meetup too? Sure. Well, Sorry you know what? That, that's, that's good. I'm sitting here saying meetup and we yeah. haven't even discussed right. what we're talking about. So <laughs> go ahead and tell everybody what we got set up. All right. Well, we, we put together, um, you know, you know, the, the, um, the thing meetup where a lot of obviously photography clubs and groups get together. Uh, we've gone ahead and created our own and this could be called mirrorless adventures and just say it straight out. And there's probably not a lot of people watching the show that aren't shooting mirrorless, but whatever. Um, Anybody can join. You you want to bring an iPhone with you. You want to bring a DSLR. Um, bring a film camera. We'd love to have you along because I know I'll have mine probably with me. Um, but we're setting up a Mirrorless Adventures meetup group. Um, and, you know, our first intention was, and I think uh, maybe even six months ago we talked about this. Yeah. Uh, is doing something like this because we wanted to sort of harness the uh, – would you say harness the energy that we had that one October when we did uh, the Kelby walk? Well, you did it. You got it going. And we had like 80, 90 people there or yeah, something. It, it was, was crazy. crazy. <laughs> and, and it was a lot of fun and, and, you know, it was free. And, and we said, you know, we got to do that because like out of Chicago, things like out of Chicago, when everybody was there, you know, the, because of mirrorless minutes and, and, you know, look, we're a big, we're one of the top referrers to get people to go there. So, um, you know, we wanted to do some stuff that was going to be given back and maybe not uh, 10 hour classes for free. Right. Yeah. Um, but we wanted to walk around and, and shoot and, and have fun and, you know, maybe go out to a bar or restaurant after. And, and that's the whole idea of meetup. So, so we put this meetup together and uh, we call it Mirrorless Adventures. And we actually have three, three things out there. Well, three and then the new Philly thing, we'll, we'll just say it's on there. But, uh, yeah, so so why don't you say what we have out there at least, right? Sure. Now. Yeah, okay. so a great description of what it is, you know, and like you said as well, you know, there are going to be some free events, and also there will be a few that, you know, pop in there that are paid events as well. Um, so the first one is going to be Sunday, March 13th. It's going to be in Ann Arbor uh, here in Michigan, and this is just kind of like a social photo walk kind of a, a an affair. It's not going to be necessarily an educational experience, Mm -hmm. But um, if you want it to be an educational experience for yourself, feel free to ask questions because, mm -hmm. you know, to myself or Mike or, you know, any of the other attendees that are even there, I'm not like uh, trying to put any people on the spot necessarily. But I think you'll find that at these events, um, people just like to to share and work together and and everybody is a teacher or, or a student right. in these events. But it's um, Sunday, March 13th. We're going to meet in front of the Camera Mall in Ann Arbor, which happens to be, I love brick and mortar stores. And Camera Mall is probably, for me personally, my favorite yeah. camera store that I've been to yet. Um, we're going to meet in front of the Camera Mall at 11 a.m. We're going to do like a three-hour walk. Um, 
And if you go to the our meetup page, which of course we'll have links to after the show, mm -hmm. you'll get more details about that walk. Uh, three hour walk. Just we're gonna check out you know the popular photography spots in Ann Arbor. Uh, so like Graffiti Alley, and we'll walk around uh, some areas on campus and and on State Street. Yep. But uh, we're not limited to just those areas, you know. We'll probably explore a little bit more and get a little bit off the beaten path as well and just have a lot of fun with it. So that's going to be the the maiden voyage, uh, Sunday, March 13th. Rain or shine. Yeah. Right, exactly. There's what, we have 20 signed up right now, but there's no limit. Yeah, no limit for this one. It's free. And, you know, I mean, I'm just looking at some of the people going. We'll put them on a spot like David Foster. Mm -hmm. He'll help anybody. I mean, I'm looking oh, at yeah. some of these people. They would, they would love to help. Yep. Actually, uh, he's going to be there as Gavin Beckford, who has that's moved awesome. from Florida, and he's back in Detroit now. So um, that's awesome. And I just I look at all these people, and a lot of them are, are there. Uh, you know, Mary Jo, uh, she's got an EM5, and she's got the original EM5. So <laughs> yep. and she shoots that like nobody's business. So I think, Sweet. you know, it'll, it'll be a lot of, uh, a lot of fun. And um, one thing I didn't mention is no matter if you're listening to this and you're I don't even care if you're in another country, just wherever, sign up for a meetup. It's free. Oh, yeah. Because we well, might be doing some of these social walks. It could be in another town. We've, oh, yeah. We've already talked about it. Yeah. So let's, uh, you know, it doesn't cost anything, and, and you'll get notices when the stuff's out there. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know, and like you said, uh, right now, most of the ones we're announcing right here are uh, – Mm -hmm. based in Michigan, but we'll talk about one a little bit later that's coming up in July that is not in right. Michigan. And uh and I'll jump into the I'll jump into the next one as well because it's chronologically it's the next one. Yeah. And it's uh it's not part of our meetup, but it is a workshop that I'm participating in uh as one of the instructors. And that's with and I've mentioned it before, fellow trailblazer Alex McClure uh has invited me out to work with him on his workshop, uh astrophotography in Arizona. Um, again, there will be a link to that and, uh, in the show description after the show is over. That is going to be, it's going to, it's going to be exciting for me just as much as it is for, I think the students out there, I love the mountains. I love the desert Southwest here in the States. Um, although my experience is limited to Utah as, our, as far as that's concerned. So Arizona will be exciting for me and shooting the Milky Way and long exposure star trails and just the night sky in general in that setting is going to be phenomenal. Uh, that is a paid workshop, but when you see where you're shooting, what you're shooting, uh, you're definitely going to want to sign up for that one. So again, that one's going to, it's coming up in May, May 6th through the 9th. Uh, that's right. going to be again in Arizona. So, And when that, you pay on that one too, it's um, the yeah. lodgings in, included, right? Yes, it is. Uh, yeah. So, so that's we're, important when you go out there and you're looking at the price, you go, oh my gosh, well, got to think about your lodging. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that's lodging expensive. is a part of it. And, right. and in all honesty, too, where we're staying is at this Nordic Center that's at 8,000 feet up in the mountains. So yeah. you, uh, it's going to be a heck of a lot better than staying in some funky hotel in a city somewhere. So mm -hmm. keep that in mind. So again, yeah. that's May 6th through the 9th. Uh, do you want to talk about uh, the next one, June? Yeah, yeah, we can. Um, well, June, I think June will talk uh, uh, mainly about, um, I guess, out of Chicago, right? Well, uh, we got, well, oh, no, got, no, no. got, before that, we got your walk at Kensington Park, right? Yeah. So uh, another. Well, and I signed up for this, but I, I'm going to be there too anyway. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that one's, uh, it's another Sunday walk. Mike and right. I are trying to do these on Sundays. There's a reason for that. Mike and I both also work <laughs> regular jobs yeah. you know the big photography dream isn't you know yeah. like a full-time job for us we have a different reality we're living in so another full-time job <laughs> exactly <laughs> so we're scheduling these walks on sundays it just seems to be a little bit easier people can still right. have a saturday with their family before heading out to these and our walks are short for the most part so this one is going to be uh sunday june 5th at kensington metro park mm -hmm. it's basically uh it's a great metro park, which is just a big nature area uh, in between some urban centers on the east side of the state. And again, more details in a link below to the meetup page for that. But beautiful trails. And some of the images that I'm going to share tonight that I shot uh, this past, was it Saturday or Sunday? Sunday. Sunday. Um, so to give you an idea of the kind of wildlife you might see there, it's a blast. And again, it's a free walk. Just uh, come on out and walk with us and learn how to shoot uh, animals and plants and all those things in nature that I love to shoot. 
Yeah, that um, uh, actually Kensington Park is one of the ones because there's a lot of metro parks. If you're not familiar, the, the, the you know the metro Detroit mm -hmm. or southeast Michigan area, um, but Kensington is one of the ones with the biggest wildlife. Yes, like preserves, and they you know I mean like I'm out here at Metro Park, like Metro Beach. There's a very there's a couple little wildlife things, but nothing like out there. I mean, yeah, you know, are you showing the ones where you're feeding the birds and stuff? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Mean, that's just crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a pretty cool experience. Yeah. You know? And then this year also there is a pair of uh, mating and nesting bald eagles. So oh, wow. and you know, and at that time of year there will be herons there and there mm -hmm. are osprey that nest there. A lot of really cool birds. If you're a bird or bring along lens. If mm -hmm. you're not into birding, um really cool plant life there insects you name it it's just a really cool spot to go shoot and you'll see if you if you show up again if you're in michigan and that's yeah. uh june 5th yeah and if uh if you're not in michigan come to michigan because yeah. you can join no one's going to tell you you can't be there it's free right. oh so uh, let me let me uh yeah. throw this out there too i forgot to mention it the walk is free there is a charge to get oh, into yeah. the park uh it's yeah. ten dollars for a car load but it uh it goes to help support the park and then, like i said it's a beautiful park so yeah yeah definitely definitely so what else is going on in june let's june, get away from the yeah. countryside yeah we're back we'll go back into the city across the lake here uh across lake michigan and hit out of chicago conference and you know you've heard us talk about it over and over again and i and you're and i bet you're going to hear us talk about it even more because two weeks from now we're going to have an out of chicago special with uh, chris smith the founder of out of chicago to really break it down so if you haven't signed up uh, two things. If you haven't signed up, you're going to learn a lot on February 3rd. If you have signed up and you really want to know how to select some of those classes, that's where we're hoping Chris can shed some light on what people are doing, maybe shed some light on some of the new things that he's got, you know, signing up for an individual, uh, you know, in some individual training or signing up for some of these pre-workshop pre classes that they have, you know, we're, like we're doing one. But uh, in out of Chicago, it's the 20... What's the actual dates of the event? Twenty fourth to twenty sixth. Yeah, let me look here. Uh, because twenty third to the twenty sixth. Twenty third, if uh, no, that's the pre show. Yeah, right, right. So the twenty fourth to twenty sixth is the actual. Is the actual show. official. Right, but I know you and I are in Thursday the twenty third to teach uh, mm -hmm. a live composite in the city and motion in the city, which is going to be awesome. I yeah. last I checked. From Chris, there was one or two spots left uh, in that thing, so we're, we're real close to selling out. Um, so we would love to have that thing full. It'll be full. I'm oh, yeah. certain of it. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, we're going to hit some unbelievable spots, and we're going to go into live composite more than more than you'd even want to know. I mean, we're going to go from get from the very start in the classroom to mm -hmm. talk about it. And then walk out in the streets and actually do it for two, three hours. Yeah, I think that that's a big deal too. I think because um, mm -hmm. to get to understand how that feature in the camera works and how to right. set it up, so that once you get out in the field, it's just it's playtime at that right. point, you know. And that's exactly it. Because then, and this is why I think I love it so much is. The more and more you do live composite, the more and more you start to see in live composite. So you oh, start yeah. thinking, yeah. oh, this would be cool as you're driving at night. And you know, this might be a neat <laughs> little turn to have. Yeah. I got to come back here because you really don't think that way until you understand how it works. And I, and I think you are you hit that right on the head. Once you feel comfortable with those controls, it is pretty darn easy. Yeah. And then you can, like you said, experiment and have fun, like doing the zoom poll thing and there's all kinds of crazy stuff between that and light painting and, you know, just, just some amazing stuff you can do. And then, you know, then everybody's going to have a fireworks show uh, come July 4th. They'll be primed and ready if they come to that class. Yeah, exactly. Do fireworks when they leave there the next week's July 4th. So they should be primed and ready for, for that. But <laughs> you've got a, um, you've got an actual class there. You're going to talk about landscape. Yeah. Yep. Uh, you know, dramatic landscape. Exactly. Um, that Jamie, one's yeah, sold Jamie, out. Dramatic though. landscape, McDonald's sold out. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, get on a waiting list, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think uh, they're going to try. outside the door of the classroom. Right. I know <laughs> last I knew from Chris, they were trying to find a bigger venue for my right my class so that we could open up uh, some more spots. Good. It was Good. Like the, it sold out like 
yeah immediately upon opening which i was like oh my gosh like yeah and i started thinking <laughs> holy crap like how many people am i gonna be teaching <laughs> so yeah we've got that uh we've got some photo walks uh you're out doing a photo walk i'm out doing one with uh, Derek's story which is gonna be exciting in uh, yeah. wicker park um so you know we'll have uh, a lot of just that whole weekend it's just going to be a blast if you haven't looked at out of chicago yet or you keep hearing it and you you wish we would just, you know just shut up well then sign up and then <laughs> we'll stop up. talking about right. it as soon as you <laughs> sign up right um so now see we go into july and i think i'll let you take july then holy cow so yeah. <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna give kind of like the rough idea of what it is, yeah. but you're the mastermind. So July 16th and 17th, swing over to the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia. If you live in that area, come hang out with us. Uh, if yep. you don't live in that area and you're looking for just a weekend getaway, swing over to Philly. You can get flights to Philly from all over the place for pretty cheap mm -hmm. actually. And if gas prices keep doing what they're doing, yep. it's even going to be cheaper. So uh two day workshop in Philadelphia, uh, rough outline, I'll, I'll just mention a couple of spots we're going to visit and then I'll let Mike go into more detail because Mike's actually, he's been to Philadelphia wow. way more times. I've only been there <laughs> twice. Um, Eastern State Penitentiary. Mm -hmm. I almost wish I would have photos queued up to show some of the stuff that we're talking about, but trust me, Eastern State Penitentiary is an incredible location. It's one of the oldest prisons in the country, correct? Mm -hmm. Right. And it used um, to be the most expensive one to run in, yes. in the same time. So it's old it's closed down but it's opened up to the public for tours and photography right. tours stunning place to capture there's some incredible barber's chairs there's a uh, cell that al capone was in at one point mm -hmm. in time it's a phenomenal location uh and then also down to the naval yard correct mm -hmm. am i saying that right right uh, yep no you're right the navy yard where they retire uh, naval ships right now which uh, you know exciting place to go shoot uh boathouse row that's kind yeah. of an iconic landmark of that area um, and I'll let you jump in and take over because you know way yeah. more about the location. No, yeah, the, when we well when we get into uh, East State Penitentiary, we'll go in early because they do have tours, and oh, I'll never say it's packed, but but there are people there. But we'll go in and we'll because it's built in. Um, I say the easiest way to describe it, it's like it's a, a, it's a hub and spoke. Yeah, yeah, it's a hub and spoke. So we'll go out to the areas that the tours wouldn't get to right away, so everybody can get some shots there. And um, this is one of those chances to do urbex without doing breaking and entering. So you might, you know, <laughs> just to let you know that might be something. If you always say, oh, I'd like to do urbex, but I'm not going to break into a building or, you know, try to jump a wall. You don't have to jump any walls. Uh, you just got to go into your wallet, pay the admission to get in. Um, that's the biggest thing. Um, but then between that and then the rest of the day when Jamie was talking about uh, doing some night stuff, we're, we're going to go out and walk around, uh, you know, like the Philadelphia Art Museum where Rocky, of course, ran up the, uh, the steps. And, uh, yep. <laughs> and uh, we'll have uh, – there's all kinds of good street photography options out there. There's a couple of festivals going this, this weekend too, so we're going to see if we can get, you know, inside some of those. Uh, as well to do some street stuff, um, but that'll be a lot of fun. And then the night stuff, like Jamie says, we'll do the boathouse row. We'll we'll, uh, we'll swing around and we'll hit. We've got a couple of really cool bridges to shoot off of. Um, one for some uh, live, both of them really for live composites. Some with cars, some with star trails. And if we got time, there's a look. At, there's two extra places that I'd love to go, but I don't want to mention them. I want you to sign up, and then I'll tell you. Because if we can do it that night, um, I really like to try to get down into the city a little deeper. Um, there's a really cool place. And then the next morning, though, on Sunday morning, um, we'll wake up. Jamie's talking about that naval yard. We'll hit that, but we'll also hit a, an awesome spot for sunrise. And that's where I know Jamie will really help the group get everybody going on uh, teaching the best ways to, you know, get into uh, your sun, your your sunrise pictures and your landscape, and it's going to be a cityscape, cityscape type image yeah. with the sun rising up between the buildings. So it'll be awesome. And then it's gonna, you know, then we're gonna end up in something we're gonna do a little different because everybody's gonna try to get back. You know, it's Sunday. You're trying to get back home wherever you are. Um, that next Sunday, we're gonna have a, a a Google Hangout, not live for the world to see, but just for the participants. And everybody's going to share pictures. We'll talk about processing, you know, how did you process yours? And we'll we'll go through about four or five pictures of everyone. But that'll just be in, a, in addition to 
up to the actual, that's part of the workshop. We'll just do it the next Sunday and you can just sit around your house. You don't have to fly anywhere. You don't have to drive anywhere. <laughs> just talk about some of your images, you yeah. know, and, uh, um, and, you know, like this whole show, I think uh, today, it's about workshops. It's about training. It's about taking time for yourself to unplug. Most people are watching this are working the same type of jobs we are unplug from that job the family it's tough to go on a photography walk i'll say it with it like anything even if my wife listens to the show it's tough because it, nobody wants to stop and take pictures of 20 different ways of right. angles and stuff they want to keep moving on vacation um you're with photographers everybody wants to stop everybody wants to try a different angle and, yeah. and then you start talking about a great camaraderie um i haven't been to a workshop personally or taught one that just hasn't been fantastic from that sense. We've all walked away saying, you know, good friends, uh, you, you eat, you know, you eat well, you talk while you're eating, it's all photography. Um, yeah. You really don't get a lot of chance to unplug and do that. So I think more than just the picture, sometimes this that's a good thing. Yeah, you know? it's definitely, you know, aside from, from getting the education, you're getting inspiration from everybody around you. That's you know, good. It's, I walk away from from every event that I've been to and led. Mm -hmm. I think I feel just as inspired and motivated and pumped up to to use what I, I learned from the attendees. Even you know, I'm I'm always right. gaining something from the people that show up as well. So oh yeah, it's definitely a good time. Um, so the next month be yeah. August, and I know. You're going to be an international traveler that weekend. I am I'm going to be out in Toronto with uh, with uh, I think I'll call him Mike. But I think Michael by Michael uh, Mraz. Um, he is an unbelievable architecture uh, uh, photographer. He does that for his living. So this is what he does. You know, interiors, exteriors of buildings. But he knows some of the greatest places in Toronto to get high above and to do. We're really going to focus on night photography here. Um, there'll be some day stuff for sure too, some sunrise stuff the next morning. Um, but the the big part is going to be nighttime photography in Toronto. And Toronto, one of the big differences between Toronto and Detroit is Toronto is like a gleaming brand new city. <laughs> I mean, it's just like the buildings just shine uh, in Toronto. And, uh, you know, the, the roadways are clear and they, and they make great streaks for coming in and reflection off the buildings. The buildings come right up to the expressways. Wow. Um, it's really an interesting way they have the city put together from an architecture standpoint. So we will hit that. And, you know, um, when we get that posted, uh, I'll share some of Mike's work. He's at out of Chicago. If you're going to out of Chicago, uh, I know we'll talk about that when we're there, too, to our classes. He's doing a, what is he doing, a two-day architecture class wow. Thursday and Friday like it's all one class you're actually gonna come you're gonna go eight hours Thursday eight hours Friday wow. with them him and that Angie McMonagall yeah yep. oh man that's a, that's some serious architecture <laughs> yeah that is definitely <laughs> if, if I follow her work on Chicago is just my right. ending. but uh you know Toronto is just a great city and not that far if you're from Detroit um and last year we had three people um they weren't from michigan at all coming there so cool you know yeah so august and then uh what no september september yeah 10th yes, and 11th that's, yeah that's what that's going to be a big one for you too there yeah for us yep so that's going to be a, kind of a repeat of what we did last year on the east side of the state the small town mm -hmm. to downtown format two-day format uh again september 10th and 11th we will be shooting the city of grand rapids uh, so again, fun city to shoot a little bit different, uh, climate, I think than, than what Detroit was. Detroit is, yeah. uh, I don't know. It's, it's just, there's a completely different feel. Grand Rapids. I would almost say that there is a bigger, like hipster <laughs> side to it, I guess, you know, yeah. but very fun though. It's a fun city. Uh, so we're going to do the urban shooting there. Uh, I'm scouting out a couple of really cool locations to do, uh, nighttime photography, to do live composite, long exposures, I know of a couple of spots where the the freeway that goes by the city intersects with the city that'll make for great yep. shots. So that would be the uh, the urban component of that workshop, and then the the small town side of it wouldn't really encompass towns at all per se. It would be more of a landscape uh, segment. But there are a couple of 
I'll just say interesting pieces of architecture that I have picked out that we'll visit that um, mm -hmm. they've, I think I've shown a few of them in a few of my photos, but for people who have not been to those locations, you'll get a kick out of being able to shoot those as well. So again, yeah. two day format, and we're going to follow the same uh, style that we're doing with Philadelphia rather than mm -hmm. having like um, the last day be just jam packed with trying to get shooting in and then, everybody cramming into a room and going, going over post-processing and stuff like that. We're going to do the, we're going to again, try the private Google hangout format for the workshop attendees. It won't be broadcast live. It'll just be our group where you can exchange, um, share images and we can exchange ideas on, you know, processing how we processed or if people are looking for feedback on what they've created, things right. like that. So right. it'll you know, be fun. Yeah. And something else on all of our workshops, except maybe the, the ones that are just the walks with meetup, um, but the real workshops will have a private Facebook page. Yes, yeah. That between like like right now, we've got already got a couple of people signed up for Philadelphia. Um, we'll have all of us as they come in on this Facebook page, and everybody will introduce themselves. You know, and between now and you know, we're not there till July, right? So there'll be a lot of talk about you know. Hey, what did you do this weekend? What did yeah. you shoot? We'll post pictures, and you know, and it, it's private. Nobody else sees it but those that have registered. So I, you know, that's just another to me. That's a nice added bonus. Oh yeah, to have well, along with it because you start to learn. You can get to know each other. Be shooting with before yeah. you get there. Yep, definitely. So we'll, we'll have that for everyone too. Everyone that comes on. Um, let's see. I think that that might cover it. And then who knows what else we put out on Meetup. Right. Yeah. And that's just it too. So this is, we've covered almost every month, you know, starting from, you know, March on into mm -hmm. September, but Mike and I are already talking about maybe like a fall color tour up in yep. the Northwest part of the state for a couple of days, or maybe even just a one day deal where uh, we meet up with some people while we're in the area anyways. So mm -hmm. just join the meetup group. It's very important that you do that because little things like this might just pop up. Mike just might have a free day one day and say, Hey, you know, I'm going to be yeah. in Austin or something for work, you know, and uh, I've got oh, a free day night. and maybe I'll just do an impromptu meetup. So oh, absolutely. You, you would not know if you were not part of the meetup group. So yeah, right. definitely sign up for the meetup group. Yeah, exactly. No, for sure. We want to do that. Yeah. Um, all enough. right. Do you want to, what do you want to go? Do you want to go some pictures? Sure. Things yeah. Pictures. We can do pictures. <laughs> all right. <laughs> All right. Me first or you first? Yeah, you first. All right. Me first. So right. we were speaking about uh, some of the locations for some of these events. And one of those was Kensington Metro Park. And Mike said, are you going to show the pictures with the birds? <laughs> yes, definitely. This is what you could expect to run into at Kensington Metro Park on any given day. Although when we're going, you won't need to wear gloves and it won't be five below with the wind chill like it was Sunday when I was there. So you show up to Kensington spring a little bit of bird seed and the birds will literally eat right out of your hands. Uh, this was shot with the, <laughs> so I made a big mistake. I thought I brought an EM one with me, but I only had the EM 10 Mark two. So I put the 40 to 150 uh, F 2.8 pro with the teleconverter on the little tiny EM 10 and still works like a champ. So it's pretty impressive. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy <laughs> yeah. to hold that kind of a setup, but it works great. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is a, uh, for those who need to know, a tufted titmouse. Um, mm -hmm. And it's eating out of a friend of mine's hand. Uh, just another shot. This is a red-bellied woodpecker. And again, you know, if you can feed them out of your hand, then obviously you can get close to them. So I was I was pretty close to this bird. And to be able to use the 40 to 150, which allows you to clo uh, focus close anyways, um, I could get this ridiculous amount of detail on this. If you blow it up uh, at home, like on my... I can almost see myself in his eye, you know, from like six feet away. It's how clear it was. Hmm. Um, so prior to that, I had, I think on the last show, I shared pictures from a little urbexing trip with a uh, friend, David Bastador and an, another friend, uh, David Lawrence. And I went back there with uh, my friend, uh, Mark Miller went and who else went? Did Seth go with him? I don't know. Seth went with, uh, Dave Lauren. Oh. No, I mean, Dave Bostador and Mark Miller went on this one. Jeez, I'm, too many Daves. But anyways, <laughs> so we went urbexing. And then after leaving that, David Bostador, he, he's one of those people that loves to just hit the open road and just see what we can see to shoot. And we came across this spot where there's an old schoolhouse. And while the old schoolhouse normally would have been the focal point for most photos, 
there was a little outbuilding with this scraggly tree next to it that I decided to shoot. So that's kind of what you're seeing here. I uh, shot with the EAM 5 Mark II and the 7 to 14 millimeter. I love that lens. Mm -hmm. Now, the next two pictures tie into something that I want to share after the pictures are done being shared. So this is a shot of my son. That's the one I wanted to share first. So this is a shot of my son, Carter. And this is shot uh, this straight out of the camera with the EM10 Mark II with the Voigtlander 42.5 millimeter F.95. Yes, F.95. I love telling people F.95. Uh, <laughs> so this was wide open. And although it is a little soft on the eyes because I'm shooting at F.95, you can see how crazy shallow the depth of field is on him. I mean, once you get to the edges of his eyes, He's, they starts to lose focus. It's that shallow. Uh, stopped down, I love saying that, to F1. <laughs> this is what you get. Uh, so the lens at F1 is like ridiculously sharp, but the difference between F.95 and F1 is astounding to me as far as the background being totally obliterated due to the uh, the aperture. So, yeah, that's the uh, the pictures I wanted to share. I just wanted to share images from uh from this <laughs> yeah that is crazy look at that That thing is a, a beast so for people who have not had any experience with the voigtlander lenses i just want to point them out i can shoot with these uh because it's not a competitive product to olympus mm -hmm. products it's part of our contract with olympus being in the visionary program we're not supposed to shoot with a competitive product Currently, Olympus has nothing that is uh, f.95, so <laughs> actually you really know what he does. So that's why I get to shoot with this, but it is heavy. Uh, this lens, in all honesty, probably weighs as much as like the 7 to 14, and, wow. it's, and it's tiny. But um, I'm thoroughly, thoroughly ecstatic to be shooting with this. I've got the 25 millimeter f.95, which is great. It's wider, mm -hmm. but when you almost double the focal length, by going out to the 42.5, you you get the compression from being a longer lens. And then you couple that compression with uh, the crazy aperture of F.95. I can't wait to do some shots, full body shots, yeah, so that I can see. Real portrait lens. Oh, yeah, totally it is. And, yeah. But what I'm really wanting to try with it is uh, full body shots to see how much subject isolation I can get so that I can uh, separate my subject from the background. Yeah, yeah. With that's it. Man, and it's all metal too, isn't it? The that, there are two materials used in the construction of this lens, yeah. steel and glass, <laughs> and that is it. But it is a manual focus only lens too, which is another right. thing. If you pick up the lens and feel how heavy it is, it's amazing to think that there are no like autofocus motors involved mm -hmm. with it either. Um, so that's that, and I think I'm going to do a review of this that I'll put up on the mirrorless minutes website because I'm totally neglecting the mirrorless minutes website itself. So there'll be a YouTube component to it. Cause I like to do the YouTube videos as well as a uh, written component. And the last thing I want to show, which Mike knows what it is because <laughs> when I met Mike on Sunday to discuss our workshop schedule, I had been telling Mike, I want to get the think, uh, I almost called it a think tank photo. Holy cow. <laughs> the yeah. peak design bag, the everyday messenger, messenger bag. And um, he kept saying, don't get the bag. Don't. And I'm like, all yeah. right, I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait a little bit longer. <laughs> so I get there and Mike says, here, this is for you. And I'm like, well, what do you mean? Was it? And it doesn't work for what Mike does. So Mike said, here, it's yours. So again, <laughs> thank you, Mike. Totally freaking oh, yeah. floored that you just Absolutely. handed me like the, the hottest bag on the planet right now yeah well it's you know what it's you're gonna put it to great use and it's better than than me sitting there looking at it wondering how i'm gonna use it um <laughs> there are some great things in that bag though i oh mean it, it isn't because of uh something that isn't gonna work for me it's just what i do isn't gonna be the same but i'm telling you those those dividers inside yeah that the clip that holds it down i mean i know you're gonna do a review but the clip yep. that holds that thing it's, uh, it's genius design fantastic the tripod holder on the inside um there's a lot bag bag developers could look and i'm sure they're going to be stealing oh my gosh yeah. <laughs> i don't doubt that one single bit yeah so, so yeah, full review of that coming up again yeah. with a video component to it as well and i think that the review might have uh 
appeal to a lot of our followers because it's going to be mirrorless based. Right. I know it seems like a lot of the reviews I've seen of that bag are people that are lugging around DSLRs right. and it's awesome that it will hold big DSLR equipment, but people are going to want to know how much of this stuff can you fit in there? Right. And, uh, and you can fit a good chunk of it and, and still, and still keep it thin. And that's, what's pretty cool Yeah, because it condenses and, you know, expands the, for what you want. So, you know, I mean, what's nice is you can carry some flashes in there if you need. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, there's a few few things you can do. Yeah, it's pretty um, floored at how well, like, my uh, MacBook Pro just dropped right, right in there and zipped Slide right up and closed. And you couldn't even tell that there was a laptop in that bag. Yep. I'm like, holy cow. I agree. Epic. I agree. So, yeah, a couple of, inter or a couple of reviews coming up. And that's, yeah. uh, that's all I got for tonight. All right. Um, well, I can flip through. Let me flip through the my images real yeah. quick. Because I... I uh, Sort of got a theme like I did the last time. Um, well, okay. Can do you see the tree? Yeah. The tree, the barn. Okay. Well, this actually isn't like the other three that are going to come up here. <laughs> um, but this is from this past weekend, freezing cold on a Saturday morning. Um, out doing uh, my best impression with Jamie McDonald that I can in the <laughs> in the country. I, I decided not to drive down into the city this time and said I'm going to drive out to the country and spent a couple hours and as you can tell down on the bottom some of the snow started to, to actually melt so it was a little bit uglier but boy just this has the feeling of michigan winters you know just mm -hmm. old lonely old uh, barn here uh, just just out to the side but a really cool sunrise coming up in the morning we finally actually got some clouds that were broken up it's it's been so uh just overcast here uh the last few weeks so uh, happy to get out and shoot. Um, I, I've got some big trips planned starting this Friday. I'm positive I'll be out shooting like crazy um, all over the, the country here. So that'll be happening. But I, but it, one of the things I do, and I stress everyone to try to go do this, is I went back. I tried to look at some of the things that I've done in the past and some of the things that I've actually missed. And I, I'm always amazed at what I miss when I'm going through and, you know, Probably when a lot of this happens to a lot of us, you have five, 600 photos. You've been on four or five trips. You're like, oh, geez. And then you, you just keep going through and the next one comes up. But um, this one here was out in California two years ago. Uh, actually, it was right, uh, right after 2013, 2015. So right after the EM1 came out. Um, and it just this is along a highway. I was driving the coast to California, north of San Francisco. And uh, I just could not believe this old ship laying there and, and you know, the flowers. Just it was a great, great time uh, out there. Another photographer actually stopped by. I got to know him a little bit. But what a cool thing. And there's the funny thing is there's there isn't a lake anywhere near there. Something so, something like yeah. that on the side of the road yeah. is cause for accidents with photographers. I know. I tried getting I, I, trying to get off the road in time. To I shoot absolutely I slowed down and had a That's turn incredible. around. Beautiful. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. And then this next one is, uh, is on a business trip. I was in Connecticut. It's a Stanford, you know, Stanford with an M Connecticut, just walking around in the city that Jeez. night. And this is a building. This is just, I'm going, what in the heck? Um, obviously a very tall building. <laughs> um, but, uh, this is with the 14 to 42 easy, the, the EM 10, just, you know, I threw it in my brief, briefcase that I took off. It's all I had with me. Um, but what a cool building to be standing underneath and then, you know, and I get these shots like that. And, you know, it's just a, a half hour photo walk my, of myself <laughs> out walking, but a, a very cool building. And the last one, again, two years ago, out in Chicago, um, this is from the North Beach and a lot of people have seen shots like this, and, and I didn't put this one out there, but one of the things that wasn't around when I put this together was that dehaze mm. in, uh, from uh, Lightroom, you know, inside Lightroom CC when I first got this. And I, I went ahead and I put that dehaze on, and you can just tell, if you saw this, this was on a really foggy, almost total misty day. Um, but what it's done for this shot, bring out some of the detail in the buildings, you know, uh, I'm amazing. Again, like when you blow this thing up, you can really see that. Um, but what a, what a cool shot. And, you know, I always say go back, check things, you know, new developments, new software comes mm -hmm. out, try it. And, 
you know, it's it's something that uh, uh, you know can go back and a- end up being fun for yourself. You yeah, know, in that sense. So they yeah. came off there, didn't it? Or is it still on there? Um, oh. there you go. No, no, it's still up there. Okay. How about now? Why isn't it coming off? <laughs> Damn Google! <laughs> I know. I'm telling you, I'm here. You know, I agree I'm, about the uh, revisiting old photos and yeah, there there perfect example, like you just said, dehaze. That's a right. revolutionary improvement. Yeah. And I had so many shots in Maui that were like mm-hmm. the the volcano, like Haleakala, in the background, and some other locations. You know, it was just because it's humid, you get this haze. Yeah. And, I've revisited a lot of those photos and just used the dehaze and like they're like brand new epic awesome photos. I'm mm-hmm. like, holy crap, I need to start maybe sharing these now. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I wouldn't have necessarily shared that one. I wasn't knocked out by it just just because yeah. of that. That's you a know. that's a good bit of advice. Revisit mm-hmm. old photos. And it's a good time when it's freezing, you can't get out and yeah, and maybe you're busy with work all the time. It does not <laughs> apply to people in out. Florida. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, yeah, but that, uh, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, You know, February 3rd, uh, all special for out of Chicago of Chris Smith on. And uh, outside of that, uh, you know, I think we'll have uh, some fun times uh, coming up here. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. 2016 is going to be a blast. Yeah. So don't forget, everybody, sign up on the meetup page and uh, check us out in a couple of weeks. And everybody wish Mike safe travels. He's going to. He's going to visit some warm weather, lucky guy. I found some warm weather in in America. (laughs) Yeah. All right. Hey, everybody. Talk to you soon. See you, everybody. Take care. Bye.